Welcome my friends, Romans, countrymen, this is Maniacal Incorporated and this is a quick look at Never Second in Rome, a new game from the developer of A Legionary's Life. There's a demo out for this at the moment and it is quite a hefty demo. It took me about five hours to get through and I made a video on the last battle of the demo and that was an hour and 20 minutes long. So what I want to do here is to take a lightning quick look at the main mechanics and game loops in Never Second in Rome. In the previous game from this dev, A Legionary's Life, you played as a single legionary. Here, you're going to play as a centurion commanding a sentry. So you're going to have your own stats to manage and the stats of the troops under your control. So we have a screen that would be very familiar to anybody who has played A Legionary's Life. We've pretty much the same personal stats. We have 35 points to spend. If we bring any skill up to 60, it's then going to cost us 2 to increase it by a further 1. In the role of commanding a sentry, I figure that charisma and intellect are going to be important. We'll throw some strength in there as well. And by hovering over each of these, you can actually get a more in-depth view of what they all do. We then have the ability to select some bonus features. Uh, starting off, you only have three to pick from, and if you pick uh, some of them, if you pick one of them, it's going to prevent uh, the others. We'll go with Talented, so that then prevents us from picking Iron Willed and Fearless. We can decide our past, Direct Commission, so there are no requirements for this, or we could be promoted from the ranks. However, we would need to have two mental attributes at 57 or above. So depending on how you choose your starting attributes, it's going to open up or close off some of the options ahead of us. So we'll go for add direct commission. And we now have the ability to add a name. So we could either type one in or pick randomly. We'll go with Gaius Pacilius. And this is one of the only times that we'll actually be given templates or kind of options to choose from. So in a legionary's life, you could design your character like I did there, or you could select from some pre-made options. We're going to have a number of staff under our command. One of them is the Optio, who we must appoint at the very beginning. We're given three different Optios to choose from. And we're going to be told that Charisma is their most important attribute, so we have a 65 over here. They'll also need good awareness and discipline. Numerius. We'll select them as the Optio. And then we have a overview of our sentry. So we are the 10th cohort of the 11th Legion. And as in a Legionary's life, we're going to get a chunk of text kind of describing what is happening. And there we can see the man, the myth, the legend. Gaius Jimmy Caesar. So we are serving under him as Proconsul, it's telling us basically a description of a legionary's life. So, several generations have passed since the days of Hannibal's War, a conflict so total and dreadful as to eclipse any slaughter of the past. Carthage itself was destroyed. Spoilers! I haven't actually finished uh, a legionary's life yet. Spoilers! We can see stats for ourselves, our sentry as a whole, and for any of the officers or interesting figures under our command. And the game basically puts us to the southeast of the Alps. There is some trouble brewing amongst the Germanic tribes in the region. And as we prepare to spend the next few months transforming your recruits into versatile tools of conquest, rumors spread wildly about the intentions of the new proconsul. Whatever plans he has, this Gaius Jimmy Caesar must be a man of no small ambition. This is one of the screens that we're going to spend a lot of time on. The other one is going to be the actual battle screen. And this is where we decide the training that we will undertake, the training that our troops will undertake, and we can also deal with our inventory and trade. We have 10 turns in which to decide what we want to do. Here's a view of our administration and supervision. So administration will be transformed into opinion with Caesar. A supervision helps us to pick better units or better named characters for certain positions. Uh, our education impacts our humanitas, which is one of the, the traits that we have, and then other duties will also be transformed 
into opinion with Caesar. So administration and other duties are things that we're going to need to either maintain or try to get extra amounts of if we want to improve our reputation with Caesar. And the reason that we would want to get increased reputation with Caesar is because it is one of the things that determines our promotion through the ranks. So this is the summaries screen. Here's a summary of our character. Here is their current stats and how many AP is required to go to the next level. And we're going to get this through training. So here's our general overview. And then we also have our reputation. So Valor, Humanitas. There's our opinion with Caesar. Uh, troop opinion, religion, and integrity. So integrity is going to be impacted by taking or refusing bribes. Religion is going to be impacted by offering sacrifices or promising to hold sacrifices at the start of a battle and then actually having the money to do so once the battle has ended. Valor is going to be determined by our, predominantly by our performance in battle. Humanitas is an interesting one. It's determined by our education. Positive low to middle values have a modest negative influence on your troop opinion. So if our Humanitas goes up, so we're reading books, and the fighting men, they're not really interested in books and learning and all that carry on. So it will actually have a negative impact on our troops, but there is a way for us then to acquire artwork, which will give us positive benefits based on our Humanitas. And there's our opinion with Caesar. Altars, something would be shown here if we promised to spend a lot of money to build an altar uh, before a battle. And then we have the deed screen, nothing to show here at the moment. I'll bring up the deeds of the character that I was playing in my full run-through of the demo. Tiberius Statilius. He had four kills to his name. He had been awarded some nice silver and gold armulae by Caesar for prowess in battle. So all those accomplishments and awards will be added here over time. And we can also take a look at the sentry screen. So what I will often do is... Once we go through each day of training, come in here and check, right, how many, what's falling behind, how many AP do I need to get the, the next thing leveled up, how are they doing, so sword is an 8, shield and javelin are 4, so we might want to focus on those. And then we also have the people, so we have 3 staff as part of the sentry, and we'll be able to appoint these other 2 positions after, I think it's after the first battle. And then after the second battle, we will basically have the ability to generate notable individuals. So these are figures that could be promoted to these positions if the people holding them are killed. So here's our Optio. And they will basically train whatever training is applied to the Sentry is also going to be applied to them. So that was our summaries screen. The main thing that we're going to be doing here is the training. So we have some points available to spend on the training. There's also a respite and there is extra points. So here is our main character. And what I do like to do is to add a few points straight off to administration. So you can see they disappear from here. We would want to get our sword skill up. We'll put some into these just to start. I'm not too pushed about supervision at the moment. I think we'll just go for a kind of a flat out like that. So we're focusing predominantly on the sword, administration, and strength. And we're just kind of going across the uh, fairly average with the rest of them. Now we could spin these points as well. This will, however, impact our morale. So at the moment, if I execute this training regime, we will gain one morale. So if I add those two points, we're now gaining no morale. And let's say I decide to do some extra work. So we're actually now losing morale and we're gaining strain. So this is basically going to impact our fatigue. So we'll undo those. We won't go overboard to start. We can go on to the sentry then. And it's much the same. However, they have some uh, different abilities. So we have other duties, which we know is going to impact our standing with Caesar. Now, where it's at at the moment is enough to preserve it at its current level. So what we're basically doing is sacrificing training points to try and curry favor with Caesar. Now, you'll see here that we have 
This is where it started. I click once, it adds one. I click once, it adds one. I click again, it adds two points. And if we want to go up to the top, it's going to be another three points of uh, these training points. So we'll try and curry some favor with Caesar. Now our troops have a number of different skills. Endurance is one of them. The, uh, the sentry's endurance. Now it doesn't appear here. How do we train endurance? It's trained. You can see it across the bottom. This training also contributes directly to improving endurance. There are some skills which are trained directly through this menu, and then there are others which are trained indirectly. We also have artillery, and we decide how we want to use, or how we want to train artillery. At the moment, by leaving it as sporadic, we're not doing much. If we put it to frequent, we're doing more training. However, there's going to be a penalty to some of the other training skills. So what I will quite often do is I'll kind of uh, click this on and off. To get them training on artillery, it can be important, not in the battles, but there are some, uh, between the battles, there will be opportunities for your units to use their artillery skills. There's going to be checks, which can gain you, again, favor with Caesar. So uh, most of the game is about deciding where you want to put your training. Do you want to train them well on drill, sword, shield, and javelin, and maybe put other duties down to just keeping it at the basics or even below that, and you don't really want to worry about Caesar, you care more about your men than your career and your promotion, or whether you want to try and up your administration and other duties to gain a favor. We have some other options. We can also try and in increase our education. If we leave this turned off for long enough, if you completely neglect education for 10 consecutive turns, your Humanitas will decrease. So that will actually gain favor with your men, having low Humanitas, but it's going to cut off opportunities for you to gain morale benefits. And then there's also share the hardships with your troops. Uh, troop opinion will increase, but uh, the downside is that your moral stability will be reduced by 5. So that's an option that you can take to share the hardships with your men. So let's say that we're happy with what we've done here. Uh, we also have the inventory. So this is what we're, this is our money at the moment. This is what we're kitted out with. This is the stats it's resulting in. And we can also look at the sentry itself. Now, if I buy something, I'm not in a position, we'll say, let's say I buy some greaves and I put them on instead of these, these ones go to my inventory, I'm not in a position then to give them to uh, members of my staff. So I'm not too sure how we actually get stuff for the sentry, because at the moment, as we buy things, they will go into our personal stash. And this is much the same as what you would have, would have had in a legionary's life. We also have some miscellaneous purchases. So camp followers and nearby towns provide plenty of opportunities to have a good time. So basically this is going to increase our morale, or the entire century's morale. It is quite expensive. Here we can buy interesting pieces of art to improve our morale in proportion to our Humanitas. So by pushing up our Humanitas, we can then buy statues of cat girls, I think, or something, I'm not too sure. And that will increase our morale. And we can buy luxury goods to improve the morale to the detriment of your discipline. And you can buy slaves to help you with mundane tasks, and then you can either sell them or free them. Okay, after all that, let us get through an actual turn and see how our training regime impacts everything. So, Gaius, strength and morale have gone up by one. The sentry, sword has gone up by three, shield has gone up by four, javelin by four. Massive increases for them. We've received our regular pay which we get once, basically once per this kind of 10 turn uh, period. Our administration has gone up a small bit, our supervision has actually fallen. Our education has gone up a slight bit, so once that goes up to the end it'll become a 1. And other duties has gone up, which improves our, or will be converted into, Caesar's opinion advancement points with a ratio of 2 to 1. So at the moment, we're getting just two advancement points, so we have a, a lot of work to do to improve that. And now that we've seen our changes here, we could make changes to the training regime. 
So I've moved on to a second day, our supervision continues to fall, other duties has gone up a bit, we've gained more skills, and here we have an event which pop up every once in a while during the training. So a legionary discreetly offers you some money if you let him dodge the most menial and strenuous duties for a year. So we have a couple of different options. We can accept the bribe, which is going to decrease our integrity. We could refuse and do nothing else. Refuse and take disciplinary action. Or refuse and inflict corporal punishment. And this is going to affect our integrity and our troop opinion. I went with refuse and take disciplinary action. And what happened was that every once in a while I'd get an event with no options. It would tell me simply that your previous choice, when somebody came to you looking to get out of doing tasks, is still fresh in the mind of your troops and their discipline would improve ever so slightly. Let's this time, let's accept. So we've gained some money, our integrity has decreased by 70 advancement points and the discipline of the sentry has gone down by 200 I've advanced on another few days, and we have another event that's popped up. Our sentry is taking part in a mock battle, so this is basically a very early check of your unit's abilities. So we're going to have an actual check. It's a discipline check, oh no. And this involves basic maneuvers, which we have failed. The advance is disharmonious, you are losing cohesion. Our Optio tries to save the day, so this is a Charisma times 2 and Awareness check. It's a success. So our Optio runs from side to side behind the advancing soldiers unceremoniously, forcing them back into position. It works, at least partially. The damage is contained, so if that had failed, we would have probably lost even more opinion with Caesar. So Caesar is watching and he's not impressed at the moment, as I count my money over in the corner. So it's now time to hurl the javelins at the mock enemy, and we could attempt a single well-coordinated volley, or let each soldier throw independently, not as effective but easier to execute. So we can see that this one is slightly more difficult. I went with this one when I went through the demo the first time, so we will attempt a single well-coordinated volley. Another failure, and Caesar really is not impressed. So I should maybe have been focusing a bit more on training these guys in sword, shield and javelin instead of making money. And now we have close in and engage the adversary in hand-to-hand -hand combat. Another failure! I think I succeeded on all three of these the, the first time around, so of course look is very important. There are going to be times where you feel Oh, I wish I could have done something different there, but I didn't really have any options. I didn't really have a huge amount of control over this. But there's never going to be any one role that's going to have a dramatic impact across the entire game. It's not like, oh, that's it, we're gone, we're locked out of certain things now, Caesar is not impressed. It's our first day on the job. And, yeah, it's, it's very noticeable that it's our first day on the job. There is not a single phase of the drill in which your men have shown the expected level of competence. It not, might not be long before they have to face real danger, and there is a lot of work to do. On to day 8 of our training, we can see that our skills for the sentry are improving, and we now actually have the opportunity to appoint some staff members. So we will appoint a signifier. We could select somebody, but we only have our optio at the moment, so we will pick somebody out of the sentry. And it's going to tell us that melee skills and bravery are very important to a signifier. Charisma is also beneficial. So we get to pick our character's best ability. They're telling us melee skills and bravery. So we will go with sword. Sword is going to be their very best skill. And the available uses, so we have... When we make our next character, if we pick sword again we will have zero available uses when we create the next character we won't be able to use sword we're going to have to wait until five characters have been regenerated until that becomes available again so we pick one best ability we'll put in for our three superior we'll put in bravery shield and javelin Better than average, we'll put in Charisma, we'll put in Discipline, 
we'll put in strength of constitution. So four better than average. And then we're going to have a worst ability. And their worst ability, do you know what? They don't need to think. They just need to hack away with a sword. We could ask for advice. We will generate. And here is the generated abilities. So their sword is 62. Their very best skill. Equal with bravery. Uh, shield is a 52. Javelin is a 50. And there they go in as our signifier and we can do the same for our Tessarius which I believe is a somebody who's going to uh, guard enemy prisoners and there now we have an entire complete sentry staff now once we get through the 10 turns we can't any longer do any training or trade we can look at our inventory and our summaries so we've managed to bring up our own strength and we've gotten the sword, shield, and javelin skills of our troops up fairly high. And now that this part has come to an end, we get to move on. So our administration and other duties are converted into 6 and 5, so 11 total. Advancement points with Caesar. But his opinion is still in the gutter with us as a result of our incompetence. Here now is our full staff added here to the stats. And we're basically given a dialogue as we move out on our first bit of a mission. Now one of the tasks that we've been given is to build a, a camp. We've basically moved from our starting location. And quite often you're going to be tasked with, as part of the kind of the set or the static mission, you're going to be tasked with building a camp or reinforcing an area. And we have been assigned to simple tasks during the construction of the camp. So if I click next turn, we're definitely going to have the construction complete to this green line. If we're lucky, it will actually go out to the end of this kind of purple line. And we need to get this completed in 20 turns. If we don't, for every turn over the 20 it goes, we're going to lose opinion with Caesar. We can, however, get more opinion by striving for superior quality. That massively reduces how much is going to be completed, but it will start to fill up this bar. And the more that we have in this bar, the more opinion we gain with Caesar. He will be very impressed if we have nice looking timber, fantastic looking joints, nicely tied together. For now, we'll actually try and get this thing built. So I think that was a failure. I don't think it was great. We also have the opinion to push them in faster, but it's going to, they're going to suffer a troop opinion. We'll hit them once and then we can turn it off and you can see that it's now a reduced zone. And so your engineering is something that you can indirectly focus on as well. I think it is impacted by the, the artillery training. So I think if you do a bit more artillery training, it will positively impact your engineering skill, which could be quite valuable uh, here, like I said, for gaining opinion with Caesar and for uh, actually completing these things. We'll push them in on a bit. So we'll get them to there and we can strive for some superior quality. And we'd better get them to complete the thing. So work completed, Caesar's opinion has gone up by 6 advancement points, and potential engineering has increased. So that brings us to this screen, where we can look at summaries, the inventory, or we can continue on. Now very quickly I will take a look at one of the battles. As you can see there's quite a lot of depth and mechanics in this game, it's the same with the battles, I recorded this this actual battle last night and it took an hour and 20 minutes, so I'm not going to go through the, the whole thing. Uh, we're given our goal, which is to bring the cohesion of our enemy below 1200, and ours must be higher than the enemy's. So we are now under the command of Tiberius Statilius. This is our sentry. This is the enemy that we're fighting. There is their cohesion value, which we have to knock down to 1200. There is ours, which we have to keep above their value 
how we have a number of different stats here that inform how well your unit is performing, and they are determined by the training that you have put your men through up until this battle. As you go through the demo, they're going to explain all of these in depth, but realistically the only things that you actually get to modify during the battle is this bar here, which determines how your sentry acts. So at the moment they're steadfast. This is their commitment level. And the most important thing to watch there is twice per round imbalance plus one. That's going to start to affect this number. And we can see that if that number goes above five, we will lose what's called a clash capacity. We will also suffer fatigue. Basically that's the big one. We're going to suffer fatigue and we're going to lose cohesion. If it falls below minus five, there is going to be again a hit to clash capacity, to determination, and again to cohesion. So we want to try to keep this number between plus 5 and minus 5, and that is done by, if we go back to very cautious, will it bring up, uh, there we go, so imbalance will decrease by 2. If we leave it at steadfast, it will go up by 1, and if we go for all out, it is going to go up by three. However, uh, this also determines our initiative capacity. So this is as we strike the enemy and try to take the initiative to inflict threats to them and potentially kill their units. So we need to balance between being cautious and going all out and imbalancing ourselves. The other thing that we can determine is what our actual player character does. So here is Tiberius Statilius. At the moment he's leading by example from the front, however that's going to push his fatigue up quickly. So what we can do as this bar fills up, which is where he is leading, he's being seen to lead, people notice that he's at the front, hacking away at the enemy. As that bar goes up, it gives us an opportunity to pull him to the back. That bar will start to go down and this bar will start to rise. And this is how timid he's being viewed. If this bar gets quite high, then we're going to lose opinion with Caesar, we're going to lose opinion with our troops, and we're going to basically look like a coward. I'll take you through one or two rounds of combat. They can be quite lengthy. At the moment, our cohort is not yet engaged. We hit continue, so we're trying to seize the initiative. There's going to be a couple of rolls over on this side. Well, there's not, because there was one roll and we failed it. So that's round one, our cohort is engaged, and now our enemy, we can tell by the arrow pointing in this direction, is pretty much going to gain momentum against us. So they have two successes and a failure. They now try an advantage opportunity, so we're going to see a big wave flash through our ranks. Or we would have if either of the two of these had been a success, so that's fantastic. And now momentum switches back to the, uh, back to us. It's not looking great though, and this momentum is determined by a number of different things. Fatigue has an impact on it, but not at the moment. Discipline, combat skills, and morale. So that's determining our clash capacity, but their ability to resist that is heavily impacted by their bravery. Now, as the battle goes on, our superior training in terms of endurance and ability to resist fatigue is going to tell over the enemy. In the early part of this conflict, we're basically going to get the living daylights hammered out of us. But as it goes on and goes on, they're going to lose cohesion at a far greater rate. And the, the most effective way of losing cohesion is to kill them. It can be quite difficult to actually kill any units. We have 74 and in the many battles that I fought in the demo, I didn't lose a single unit. Like I said, Statilius had four kills by the end of his career across, I think, four battles. So we're not going to be seeing, it's not Rome Total War or anything like that, where you decimate the, the enemy unit and then hunt them down to the last man. And a handy way of getting a battle is to select the spearhead. So these are the other two options that we can select. Shield push will increase our... We can't actually put it on at the moment, but it will increase our clash capacity, but it will prevent any one-to-one -one combats, whereas Spearhead will basically 
guarantee a hand-to-hand -hand combat. So the fighter selected as the spearhead will automatically be involved in individual conflicts in this if this turn produces any. And we get to select, there's our player character, Statilius, but we can also select sometimes uh, some of the other units that we've created. So the ones that we've appointed to staff positions or the ones that we have generated the, the five interesting characters in the cohort or in the uh, in the legion in the century we got there in the end at the moment so if we go for all out it increases our clash capacity but not by much so do you know what we'll keep it as steadfast at the moment uh, their imbalance is going up pretty heavily so i would imagine that they're actually going for all out and they're now going to start suffering Cohesion, Clash Capacity, and Determination Penalties, or uh, I should say Clash Capacity, Fatigue, and Cohesion. And we can actually see that kind of playing out now. They're attacking us, they're trying to gain momentum, and they have a massive negative penalty. Failures, failures, failures across the board. We're in a position for a plus 14, as we that was an advantage uh, momentum. When that occurs we get threat rolls. So we fail this one, then another one was generated, we succeeded, that goes to a kill roll, unfortunately we failed. If that had succeeded, we would have killed a member of their infantry, and they would have suffered a very hefty damage to their cohesion. At the moment, they just suffered six, and we actually have a fight involving Tiberius Statilius. So these would look quite familiar to what you would have seen in a legionary's life, uh, we have our character here, we have the opponent that we're fighting against. They're unarmored, bar a helmet. They have fatigue. If I'd been keeping him back, he actually wouldn't be involved in this battle. And uh, they have a good chunk of health. We can select an attitude. So this will determine the options that we'll have across the bottom. And uh, we could go for careful. We'll go for rapid, which will add plus 8 to all of our attack rolls. And we can then close in. So there are rolls done in the background to see who acts first and how many actions they get. We get two. So we have a fairly limited selection of actions. There's soft spot, there's intimidate, which we'd be able to do if we were on the regular stance. If we try and strike against this guy, we have a plus 36 from all of our various skills to hit him on the torso. So we've managed to hit him, we've managed to inflict some damage to his health, and we've managed to hit his stance. So just like a legionary's life, if your stance is weakened, it's going to make it harder for you to hit the enemy, and it's going to make it easier for the enemy to hit you. We might as well give him another belt. We won't go for the head, because he has armor there. We'll keep hitting him in the belly. Keep poking away at that belly. And after we take our two actions, it goes over to the enemy. He's making an attempt to improve his stance, and he has given himself a defense bonus. So that has knocked down our attack modifier. The difference between the attack roll that we got, nice, and that the enemy got wasn't massive. So all we've done is hit their stance as opposed to dealing any damage to their health. But that makes it now easier for us to hit them again in future, hopefully. They tried to... They actually just added... So because of their fatigue, they're basically getting less actions than us. We have five rounds. I don't think we're going to be able to take them out. They're pretty heavily armored. That's a nice hit. Now we could go for something like the neck. It's a plus three if we roll low. We rolled high, but so do they. We have dealt nice damage to their stance. Which means that they're going to have to waste turns trying to improve their stance. We managed to knock it down again a small bit. We'll go for the neck again. And they actually managed for the first time to defend, which gives us, because of our attitude, we actually suffer a hit to our stance. So we're basically attacking all out. I think if we were regular, we wouldn't have suffered as much of a hit to our stance for failing. We have the ability to recover. So if we take a look now at our strike... Do you know what? It's actually still a plus 40. 
So we didn't, probably because they're in such a bad state, we didn't suffer as much of a penalty because of our lack of stance. And that's pretty much all we're going to be able to do in this round of combat. So we have knocked them down to 57 health. It's entirely possible that we or another one of our troops will see them again in future. We have inflicted a crushing victory. No doubt that this will be added to our list of accolades. We might even get a reward from Caesar because of this. If we get another couple of fights like this uh, throughout the battle. Uh, Tiberius is uh, doing mighty work at the very start. You can see damage to formation has been 16. So I think they'll suffer a total of 22. They got 6 from that threat and 16 from Statilius. As the battle goes on, especially if it's a lengthy one, as Statilius gets tired, we can see he's fatigued now at the moment. And you don't really recover fatigue. By putting him to the back, his fatigue goes up slower. But... He can be an absolutely a well-trained centurion. Can be absolutely devastating. Because like I said, if you can get a couple of kills, if we could have killed that guy there, this would be like an 100 of a loss. Which would be absolutely massive to inflict on them. They lost 22, and that's been applied 11 to their cohesion and 11 to front. And we have a lot of different kind of factors at play here. The max value of front is equal to 25% of the current value of the cohesion. If the front falls below 300, then it's minus 4 to momentum, plus 2 advantage damage. There's lots and lots and lots of different kind of modifiers here. But realistically, the only ones that you can actually impact, like I said, are... Uh, having somebody as a spearhead, so we could select Statilius there and try to force a one-on-one -on -one battle, if one actually happens. Uh, we could increase the clash capacity, but guarantee that no one-on-one -on -one battles will happen. We can change our stance to try to keep our balance some way under control. And like I said, we'll bring Statilius back to the back as he's leading by example. And if we hit continue, we'll see that that has fallen a bit. We've gained momentum. Our advantage opportunity isn't doing great. We sweep through their ranks with our success. Our threat roll has failed. There's no battles this time. So there's no damage to their cohesion. And now it is an attempt again by the infantry of our opponents to gain the momentum. And that has been basically all of the major mechanics in Never Second in Rome. So I've seen some, some videos of this up and they're pretty lengthy. Like I said, it was an hour and 20 minutes for me to get through at just this battle. No description of the training, no description of the character creation. The demo itself is about five hours long. I would highly recommend that you download it. I've only just recently gotten into a Legionary's Life, the demo, a demo of it was out for the recent Steam turn-based RPG fest. I'm definitely going to pick that up after playing that demo and after playing this one. I've really enjoyed this one. I like many of the new mechanics that the dev has added, uh, many of the stuff that he's brought over from A Legionary's Life. I really like the idea. I really like these kind of bureaucratic simulators, as I call them the board game John Company where you're managing the affairs of the East India Company and you're uh, trying to gain office within the company and trying to get members of your family into offices. I really like stuff like that. So I really like the focus on the career, the focus on building your reputation with Caesar, the focus on trying to gain promotion within the ranks, up through the ranks, and the ability for your your figure to become a legendary warrior mowing through the enemy forces and the ability as well to actually bring others up through the ranks to do the same. What do you think of this? What do you think of Never Second in Rome? An interesting name. I'm not too sure where that's uh, that's come from. Would you would you pick this up or do you think that the the system is a bit too clunky? It looks I was a bit shocked at this the first time around. I was like I'm not going to get around this at all. It looks very complicated, but in fairness there's only a couple of things to go through. Thank you all very much for joining me on this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. 
If you did, please leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already, and I hope to see you again in future, because we have to get your javelin training up to scratch.